once the Communist Party feels like it's got Hong Kong, it's full steam ahead to Taiwan from there. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the reality of the situation is that Taiwan is, you know, in danger. You know? Yeah. 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 I, I think people in America tend to not really believe this because it seems so far fetched that a country would use military like a developed country, well, you know, China, like a modern country would use military force to just wantonly take over a democracy. But the Chinese Communist Party has been telling us for years that they are going to conquer Taiwan one way or another. The people in Taiwan fully understand this and they're preparing for it. But like people in the West are like, la di da di da they're well, just empty like, threats. Well, I feel like in Taiwan, it's not necessarily that simple. I mean, I've read some things about how like Taiwan's military is a little un not prepared for this. Yeah, that they're not keeping up their service. There's a lot to that. And we should maybe make an episode about that. But I mean, yeah, like Taiwan is definitely next. And so I really would like to know what Biden's China policy is. You know, they recently, uh, I think last week, released an interim national security strategy. Like it's oh, not yeah? the full national security strategy, but it's kind of like a interim summary of like how they see things. And I read the China section and I'm a little worried. What did it say? I didn't, I actually didn't know about um, this. Generally, similar things to what we've heard Biden administration officials say so far. Rival, but cooperate. Like rival, but like not really using stronger language mm -hmm. to talk about it. Uh, competitor, rival. Definitely don't want to like call them any kind of actual antagonist, right? You know, the strongest will go is competitor or something like that. Um, used China the whole way through. This is a... a departure from the Trump administration's national security strategy, where they specifically started calling out the Chinese Communist Party mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. Trump's national security strategy. And the there was also like a specific strategy they released on like how they see China as well that uh, specifically talked about great power competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is like a flurry of these, like, are we in a new Cold War articles uh, from this kind of stuff where like the Trump administration was specifically saying, the Chinese Communist Party, you know, uh, is like the Chinese Communist Party is the biggest threat to America's development. Well, kind of like they didn't. I don't think they said it exactly like that, but they were saying things like we recognized how the Chinese Communist Party sees the relationship between China and the U.S., which is yeah. one of great power competition. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to treat it like that. So basically more having their eyes open with like the the nature and actions of the Chinese Communist Party and the Biden administration kind of going back to this like softer like rivalry competition uh we should cooperate when it you know when we can't like not that there's it's like cooperation is none of, another one of those words that gets twisted right yeah yeah because of course no who like we're taught from children like you want to cooperate, cooperate. So, so this is a way to, to get back to the the way that the Communist Party twists language when yeah, we talk about point. cooperation we mean here in the West, we typically mean working together for shared interests and shared goals, right? When the Communist Party talks about cooperation, they mean compliance with the Communist Party's goals. You know, cooperation so, so, for a mutually beneficial future. Right. So future this, this whole mankind. right yeah. win win mutual cooperation. But what, what it really means is is now you have to cooperate with me on my terms. Because they're not right? going to give in. Because they're not. Yeah. yeah. We just have to be aware of of what that is, and and I think the the short sightedness of looking at cooperating with China on issues. Well, number one is we say cooperation because we think shared goals and shared interests. What the reality is, we don't have the same goals and interests, and we're just sometimes blind to that. And number two, we've been tricked before. The two best examples of this, I think, are the Bush administration. Started out sounding tough on China, but after September 11th, they decided they wanted to cooperate with China on the shared interest of fighting terrorism, global terrorism. And the U.S. meant one thing, and what the Communist Party did is use terrorism now as their catchphrase to persecute political enemies, and they're still using it as they go after the Muslims in Xinjiang. They just took this idea of cooperation, twisted it to their own uses, but using the same 
word uh, to meet their own ends. And it didn't help the US stop terrorism at all. It had zero impact on that. And then after that was the Obama administration who had to say that we have to, we have to cooperate with China on global warming because it's a global challenge. And the only way is to cooperate with China. And so what has China done on global warming? Number one, we know that ideologically that they don't actually care about reducing carbon emissions because they've been going full steam ahead on building new coal plants. Full, I guess steam is, is appropriate. It's very appropriate. They, um, so they said they want to cooperate, but actually not only have they been building coal plants, which are releasing carbon, but also they've been taking advantage of the renewable technology push by stealing US technology for windmills and solar panels. And now most solar panels that you buy in the US are made in China. They've totally taken over and, the industry, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they're made in China, they're made in these bad working conditions powered by coal to make the parts, right? It's it's insane. And, and yet we thought in the Obama years that, oh, we can cooperate with China on fighting this. The, China, the Communist Party does not care about carbon emissions, they they don't care about the environment except maybe as it potentially could lead to protests uh, or other embarrassments. But essentially, they've completely hoodwinked us and taken advantage. Not to mention the yeah. the Belt and Road, right? They're building coal plants on all this all along the Belt and Road. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it's it's a completely from the perspective of reducing carbon emissions. Like if you if you listen to what the Communist Party says you'd think they want to be a global leader. If you watch what they do, you'd think it's like they're racing to get to the bottom. It's well, shocking, a shocking contrast. Really, the Chinese Communist Party entire uh, foreign policy is kind of built upon manipulating U.S. diplomacy. Like if you think about the salami slicing or what they've done in the South China Sea, their whole strategy is like, we'll do the little things that push the envelope just a little bit. So much that not enough that you would really do anything because then like you don't want to, you don't want to start a war over like some rocks, rocks in the ocean. Yeah. Was that Kirk Sullivan or was that Your, Jake Sullivan or no, Kirk Campbell? It was Kirk Campbell. It was Kirk Campbell. Mm -hmm, good choice, Biden. Yeah, this whole like they understand how diplomacy works. It means you don't want to do anything until you absolutely have to. And by that point, it'll be too late. It's interesting because it's like they I don't think it's just the U.S. It's like how it's been treating like Western democracies in general mm -hmm. or just like it's like they think that no one. Like, it, it's like they've been so good at doing this that they think that no one's ever going to catch on, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's just like this whole thing that they do with the whole, you know, we're going to publish one version in English and another version in Chinese. No one knows how to read Chinese outside of China. And uh, it's it's like the, a few years ago, the Chinese Students and Scholar Associations in the U.S. got caught working with Chinese consulates and embassies because they say they were in Chinese on their websites. Or on like their WeChat. We're proudly or... working with the Chinese consulate. Yeah, thank you, Chinese consulate, for funding our whatever program. And then, uh, you know, thinking that like nobody was ever going to get in trouble because who would, you know? And then like Chinese speaking and reading journalists caught on to it. So, you know, I think there's like a there's a certain arrogance there to like that they've been able to get away with it all these years, and like, you know, they they can just keep on saying good good sounding things about win-win mutual cooperation. Well, it sounds like it's working if the Biden administration is going back, not talking about the Communist Party, talking about China, talking about cooperation. Yeah. I mean, I think we've said before that we should judge their actions. And I still think that's the, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the way to go. But In like, general, they've said mostly what they should, though mm -hmm. I'm not well. Mm -hmm. This but national like, security thing sounds awful. Yeah. So like that's the, the so it's kind of like, how will this translate into policy? Mm -hmm. um, it's that's not clear yet. Like if there is some kind of confrontation over Taiwan, what will happen? Like all of this is still kind of, yeah. you know, uh, a little bit like the U.S. has kept on doing freedom of navigation stuff in the mm -hmm. South China Sea. They've sent ships through the Taiwan Strait. Like Biden had uh, the Taiwanese essentially ambassador 
at his inauguration. Yeah, so that like, was a first. Yeah, so that there's it's not it's not like saying that there's everything's terrible. Like we're just giving up and the the, the CCP is going to take over. I don't think that's the case. Well, I think it's like but, Matt said earlier. It's like we need to judge by not what they say, but their actions. He was talking about the Chinese Communist Party, but we need to do that with the um, the Biden administration as well. <laughs>